All right, we're going to get started. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. This is our first ever Suzy Customer Summit Fireside. I, I believe I got that right. Um, and it looks like we have uh, a couple hundred thousand people watching from home. So welcome um, to all of you. Just by way of introduction, I'm Jasper Nathaniel. I uh, run the enterprise team at Suzy. And um, Funny enough, I was one of the first employees of Suzy about 10 years ago when it was actually going by a different name. Um, I was with the company for five, six years. I left in 2016 to do my own thing for a while. Um, and then basically uh, what happened was the Suzy mission of putting people at the center of everything brands are doing sort of collided with the, uh, the moment we were living through um, when the pandemic began and the economic collapse and everything. And I, I still had a lot of friends at Suzy and they were sort of telling me about how the work was changing. And, and I think in short, um, and this is really what we're going to be talking about today, the idea of agile insights went from being, um, well, we always thought it was mission critical, but I think for a lot of our, uh, a lot of brands out there, organizations, it went from being a nice to have to then suddenly that they had to have, um, you know, really just critical to stay on the pulse of, of this rapidly changing consumer behavior. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm joined here on stage by um, Patrick, who is uh, one of our great partners. So Patrick, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hey everyone. I'm Patrick Egan, uh, Director of Strategy Insights and Analytics at St. Michelle Wine Estate. You know, I lead a new team that we formed last year in 2020 in the midst of all this crazy pandemic time that is really responsible for insights across the organization. You know, we're divided up into three main functions. We've got consumer research, brand and marketplace insights, and then digital insights. So while we really are responsible for insights across the organization, uh, I think another big part of our job is to facilitate and enable insights so our partners and other departments can utilize insights in their day-to-day -day business. Our main function and really support is for marketing and executive leadership, but I think by the nature of what Jasper just said of you know insights is fundamental across the organization, we see our work bleed into sales and even things like winemaking and operations. Interesting. Um, and how much of that was already sort of destined to become your job versus 2020 happens and suddenly you have this new more sort of central function? Yeah, it was definitely, it was already in place beforehand. You know, we kind of set this up in really January, February. And then like right as we were getting comfortable and feeling like we had a good uh, platform to go forward, it's like, hey, pandemic. And we kind of had to just not really shift too much. We just had to do a lot of the, what we wanted to do at a quicker pace. Okay, cool. Um, I think, you know, it'll be interesting to a lot of people in here who I assume, you know, are researchers or work in insights or marketing at other companies. Tell us a little bit about organizationally speaking, um, how you were able to immediately start changing the work that you do for the changing times and, you know, getting through whatever sort of hoops you had to jump through and whatnot. Yeah, we actually had a planned um, executive retreat in March. Like, I think it was like literally the week of like, should we be doing this retreat in person? There, there was just a lot of gray area of like still meeting in person, but it was really our plan for the next year. Like, let's get the executive team aligned to our our strategies and priorities. So we had two weeks after that to really just kind of say, there's a lot we don't know, but what do we know? You know, I, I like to say insights shouldn't be used to make things black and white. It should be really used to like reduce the gray, you know, like there's no perfect data truly out there. So as much as we can reduce ambiguity and put a little bit of finality th to things that we can apply our own expertise to, the better off we're going to be. So that was like the perfect platform to just kind of say, the world's crazy right now. Here's what we do know. Let's make a, plath a path and a plan forward from here. And do you feel like management was a little bit, I don't want to say panicked, but like looking for something to hold on to at that moment in time. And, you know, here you come with this new idea for more agile insights and it was kind of like a no brainer for them or how did it work after, you know, the, the pitch began, so to speak? Yeah, I think they were, I don't think they knew what to expect you. I think they were, I don't want to use the word like they were blown away, but I think they were pleasantly surprised by the level of insights that we could get to in a relatively, you know, real time sort of 
uh, time frame. I think, you know, that we're still, there's a lot of things we were going to go do that weren't going to change, but we are also just ability to like validate those plans and then also understand like we definitely should not go do this um, and adjust accordingly. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, let, let's talk a little bit about what you actually found through some of the research you were doing last year. Um, focus group of one, my wine drinking habits have changed a little bit in the last year or so. Um, I'd say I drank more wine in 2020 than I did in 2019. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you learned from your consumer in the last 12 months or so. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely not the only one. Um, I'll make it a few. Oh, thank, thank God. I sure. just, sorry. A lot of people out there are the same. Um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting dynamic from pandemic behavior for, for the wine category. So I think first off, like we find found out wine's pretty resilient, right? Like it can weather a lot of storms like previous trends like health and wellness, which we are a little concerned about. Um, growth of hard seltzers, was that going to cannibalize into our consumer? And then just, you know, your run-of-the-mill occasional pandemic is going to hit on top of all that. So <laughs> what we really saw was like people were like looking for that at-home entertainment. They couldn't go outside and, you know, go to a restaurant or go to the bars or see their friends. Wine really filled in that space for that at-home entertainment to um, bridge that gap a little bit. Um, so there was definitely an increase in both quantity and quality, I would say, of wine sold. People weren't just buying more, but they were exploring. You know, they were looking for higher quality things um, and just different form factors across box wine, can wines, and just really exploring in the category. Uh, so it was definitely a lot of interesting behavior that I think was bubbling up beforehand. It just really accelerated that timeline of what was going to happen in the category. Yeah, totally. I, I can remember vividly. I, I'm in New York and must have been mid-March when, you know, rumors were swirling about the shutdown that was coming. There, there was a run on the on the wine and liquor stores and I went and I stocked up. I, I must have bought like two cases of wine, which I went through very quickly. And, and fortunately, you know, we never actually ran out here. Um, but yeah, I think you're certainly in a, one of the categories that you know, saw very clear changes in the last year. Um, and then, okay, so so I imagine you're seeing all sorts of new things. Um, walk me through the process of, you're getting these insights really quickly, you're making some sort of a change in your marketing or in, you know, your, um, uh, just, just the way that you're functioning as an organization. What does that process look like? Yeah, I think like first off, like we've really transitioned a little bit in terms of how we view insights internally. It's really gone from a, hey, I've already made this decision. Can you just like validate it or make the data look like this was the right call to a little bit more of like, let's start with a foundational consumer understanding and use that to inform our best decision going forward. So it's much more of that upfront proactive approach as opposed to like that reactive nature of looking at insights. So how we've changed, like we're really trying to instill that insights as the um, the first phase of a process internally. I think we've had a lot of good success with that. It's really adopted across the board because it, it makes everybody's job easier. You know, like everyone's got very strong opinions. Everybody um, is an expert in their own world, but when like insights can be an arbiter of opinions and really like just give you a center of truth to operate from, it's much easier to like just go execute and grow your business. Yeah, that's interesting. So. Uh, I know we're going to get into this a little bit with the case study, but so you support the marketing team, right? Uh, through, or, or sorry, is, is Insights actually part of the marketing team or do you do the research that supports the marketing team? Yeah, so we're kind of an independent team. And I, I was one of the goals of forming this team last year in 2020 was to have this independent kind of fact-based team that yeah. spans yeah. marketing and support, you know, partners across the yeah. entire organization. So you know, it's really that collaborative partnership of, you know, we can be unbiased and provide our recommendations, but we need to like really partner with those marketing and executive yeah. teams to make sure they're getting what they need as well. So is there, is there a push and pull happening there or is there some tension because, you know, marketers, or I would say more specifically creatives um, in my experience tend to really like their own ideas. And then you're coming in and saying, great news. We can get feedback on your work every single day. Um, how, how, tell me how that plays out. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on. There's a lot of push and pull, and it's about you know managing that proactively. I think pulling those people in up front and making them feel like they're part of the process 
has really been a big win for us. You know, we can help use insights to create those guardrails and parameters that the marketers and our creative teams can kind of go put their art and their magic on. But at least we're all operating from this kind of sandbox we all want to play in and then let them go do their magic accordingly. Cool. So the the marketers themselves are, I mean, I don't know if they're like literally logging into the Suzy platform, but they're, they are actively sort of taking part in the research that's being done to inform the various steps of the stuff they're creating. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Amy Darmecker, who leads our consumer research and kind of is our, our Suzy expert, has done a great job of really partnering with our marketing team. And our marketing team's like, you know, they're very smart. They've got a lot of inputs and insight as well. So it's really, you know, even though we are in these different functions, we are, really are one team that really is um, working towards these insights at the end of the day. Okay, cool. Um what has changed from the sort of all of 2020, let's say, and then a lot changes when we, we go into 2021. I think it's safe to say we start to see a light at the end of the tunnel, but I'll still sort of know uh, things might not fully return to how they were. So how does that affect the way you're doing your work? Yeah, I think it's first off, it's accepting like there's so much we don't know. Like there's this feeling that we, there's more about the consumer that we don't understand than we like comfortably do understand. I would emphasize the word comfortably because we've got, you know, broad data points and some pieces here and there, but there's like changes in consumerism that are happening at such a rapid and fast pace that, you know, a lot of times we're trying to keep up. So that's why a platform like Suzy is so important to a team like mine, because having that real time information and be able to like report it back from the time a question arises to we can uh, respond with this resolution. Like managing that in real time is a game changer for our team. And if you can imagine uh, the very scary world of pre Suzy, um, or let's just say, you know, before having your sort of agile insights, wh what do you think it would have been like uh, to to do the work you're doing without that sort of immediate uh, ability to ask questions and get those sort of quick responses? Yeah, it's, a, it's probably a lot tougher. You know, like luckily. <laughs> I, when I came to this role, like Susie was a thing. Um, but I think that that's where a lot of those opinions and really like the louder voices in the room tend to win in those situations. Um, or it's more of a seniority thing of like, you do what the, the executives say. I think the ability that Susie gives us, it allows us to kind of choose our own adventure and like bubble up those facts and data and insights that people are going to respond to. And it's really kind of hard to argue opinions versus facts. So it's definitely been a, a benefit for us. And I think just organizationally, like, Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's got skin in the game. And it's not just doing kind of what you're told to do based on opinions. Yeah, totally. Uh, I The way I think of Susie, or I, I should say the way I explain Susie to like my mom or um, people who don't work in the biz, I, it's basically, you know, imagine you're in the boardroom uh, creating your brand, creating products, and you just had one of your consumers sitting next to you. And every time you're about to make a decision, you got to run it by them. I think it's sort of self-evident that that would be helpful. And, you know, fortunately there's tools out there like Suzy that are, are basically allowing you to do that. Yeah, I think like wine definitely plays in that too. Like it's, it's something a lot of people enjoy, like, right? Like we've all enjoyed it over the last year or so, but it's a thing that like, people don't know a lot about, right? Like I know I like a red wine because it makes me feel warm and fuzzy, but like, <laughs> could I tell you like the tannins or the tuar? Like I have no clue about that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit intimidating. So I feel like a lot of times people feel like they need to educate on that, but we're not really listening to the consumer. So like, that's why Susie's great because it helps us get that consumer point of view of like, what's important to them? Like, do they care about the tuar or do they care about like the cool label or like the color of what the font is or something like that? Yeah. So it really helps us listen as opposed to educate. Yeah, I love wine and I'm a label guy, just full on label guy. There's a great wine store down the street for me. I go in and what catches my eye uh, you know, if it's in the price range I'm looking for, that's that's what I get. So I would imagine, I mean, insights is so critical just for labels alone. I, I think probably even more so than a lot of other categories. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Cool. Um, okay, I want to ask one more question, and then we'll we'll get into the case study. Um, for folks in here who might work at organizations that uh, are a little more skeptical of bringing on new sort of disruptive processes, particularly particularly ones that in some ways take control away from them and put it in the hands of their consumers. Having been doing this now for some time, 
what advice would you give them to make the case to management or their bosses or whoever that they do need to adopt a more agile approach to to insights? Yeah, I mean, I would say it, it's going to help their boss. It's going to help the organization. I think it really it cuts to a lot of clutter. And I think when you don't have like that fact based or consumer point of view, it's just again, like it's that loudest voice in the room where everyone's got their own opinion on what to go do. And this really helps cut through that and it gets alignment across the board, right? And I think especially when you bring people in up front and they're kind of building that alignment from the ground up, everyone feels engaged and like they have their opinion heard. But at the end of the day, you're rooting it fast. And again, you can just go execute, right? As opposed to like have these internal battles. Totally. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a, a frankly, when we're talking about Susie to a um, an interested party, it's never a question of, I don't know if I find this useful. It's always, how do I convince my boss who's been doing things this way for a hundred years that they should bring on something like this? So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, let's, yeah. let's I get I feel like it's also like, um, I think like organizations are gonna stop looking at insights as like a cost center. Like it's a cost of doing business and it's more of like an investment of how we grow our business. Yeah, th I think that's a really good point, particularly because even the way that you pay for research, I would imagine, is is changing in in these times as it becomes more of an always on function. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think like you know traditionally it was like I've got a project, you know, it's project based. I just want to go do this one specific thing. But like with an open access platform like Suzy, we can really like manage what we want in real time. And a big benefit is like having those built in target consumers that we can not just talk to once, but we can follow up with when we need that additional detail that we didn't think about the first time. Yeah, totally. Let's, let's, uh, I'd love you to bring that to life. Um, I guess we sort of, we talked about this already a little bit. Well, m maybe just give us sort of a final thought on how Susie has changed the marketing function. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I'm sure like everyone's had this moment at, at Susie or your, your partners of like the organization hears about it. Like this research came from Susie. This came from Susie. And like we had that moment where like someone in our executive team was like, who's Susie? Like, does she work for us? Like, what is this whole thing? Um, but it's really become like that default research platform for us that we can really go utilize very quickly to answer questions. And it's kind of it's beneficial when we had that trusted partnership um, that's valued in the organization. Like we're not trying to validate how we're looking at the data. It's just like, let's go do it and let's cut through this slack and let's just answer the question that we know. Um, so I think just having that trusted source that Susie's proven its value um, has been a benefit for us. Yeah, um, for, for those watching at home, if it's helpful to say Susie is a real person, we can, we can probably talk about it in that way. Um, okay, so let's let's get into this uh, study that we ran together. T tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so we have a, a wonderful portfolio of wines, and one of them is called Villa Antonori, which is this Italian wine that we import and we sort of partner with on some domestic marketing. So the brand was looking at it, doing a new marketing campaign, and we really wanted to test for two main topics. Like first, what brand values do our target consumer associate with? I mean, are they more traditional or do they have a more modern stability, for example? And then we wanted to test some taglines or headlines against those values to see which one's really associated with those brand values that our consumers felt. So, you know, we were able to really blend that art and science where like the brand team could come in at front and say like, this is the limited stimulus that we want to go look at, but we want to bring the science into it and test that against our consumer base to really inform us of which way should we go? And then also, you know, what, should we not do? Hmm, interesting. And it, where, where did we, where did you land? Yeah, so we actually, um, we were able to clearly get a resolution from that. We've got a headline we're excited to launch here in the summer and a campaign around it. So um, it was definitely a good win for us to um, really utilize insights for this project. Because like, honestly, I don't think we would have done insights on this project before Susie. Cause it's like in this weird gray area of like medium impact but needed a quick turnaround. So I think previously we would have just been like, what's our opinion? We know the brand, like we just got to go do this. But this is an example of a project that we were able to pull insights into that we never would have beforehand. Okay, so it's not even a matter of, here's how we would have done this pre-Agile Insights or pre Susie. It's, we, we wouldn't have done it, period. We would have just shipped the thing off to market, yeah? 
I think so. Yeah. Like we would have, you know, done as much as we could, but it would have been more gut feel than fact based. Okay. And so what are other parts of the business that you're now able to bring insights into that you actually just didn't even have it available to you in the past? Yeah, I think some emerging stuff we're looking at is like our work with our tasting rooms and our work with winemaking, right? Like it's not just about somebody picking up that bottle of wine at their grocery store or their liquor store down the street. Like we can inform how our consumers are reacting in our on-premise tasting rooms and like what's the right experience for them and what kind of ingredients like in terms of our winemaking are consumers going to react to? Like do they want organic? Do they want more fruit? Do they want less fruit? So it's really gone outside of marketing into a true entire business organization so the actual uh, do we do we call them scientists the folks that are <laughs> developing the wine w what do we call them in the biz yeah i got like they're artists really the like, artists, honestly, okay. like, those, the guys putting those wine together like it's, it's there's science rooted in it but the way they do their own individual spin is really art yeah no that makes sense um and it, the way you sort of talked about marketers have moved upstream into the insight process? Is there a similar thing happening on the innovation front with the artists? Yeah, it's really, it's it's just starting. So we're trying to build that out now, but I think, you know, they saw the benefit from more of like the foundational marketing skills. And now everybody's like, I want a piece of that. Like, how do we get involved with this? So I think the future is definitely there that we're gonna go build out. Okay, cool. Um, we've talked in the past about you know, changing purchasing behavior um, in these times. I, I think the obvious one would be moving more to online or even direct to consumer. Can you talk a little bit about how you've leveraged insights to both find these new trends in purchasing behavior and then actually, you know, bring the changes to market? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely an area of focus for 2021 is that emerging e commerce digital world. It's really it's something that's traditionally we were blind to in the category because um, there's a lot of legislation, right? Like you can't ship wine to every state. Like, so it's not just this universal growth factor that some other categories saw. And there's a lot of like disparate data points that aren't well coordinated. Like our, our digital lead likes to say it's a jigsaw puzzle and we don't even know how many pieces are in the puzzle. So that's where something like consumer insights can really be that more holistic view that gives you that view into what consumer behaviors are really doing at a much quicker pace and let's just trying to be reactive and understanding something six months down the road. Hmm. So can you give us a, a sense of some new trends we might see in the wine world in the next six, 12 months? Yeah, I think there's gonna be um, a format change, right? Like it's not just gonna be about that 750 milliliter glass bottle. There's gonna be a lot of new um, innovation on that from like canned wines or something we're already seeing bubble up and that's mm -hmm. definitely going to take off um, aluminum bottles, just different occasions mm -hmm. for wine that that's going to enable, right? Like you're gonna be able to go to the beach, like go have a picnic, carrying around a glass bottle of wine isn't exactly like fun to do in those situations. So enabling new occasions for wine is definitely going to proliferate in 2021 in the future. And then again, like that digital D to C e-commerce world, just the open access of getting your favorite winery or your favorite online experience brought to your home is gonna be a big growth driver for the category. Yeah, I think the the experience of buying wine is also kind of an intimate one because you, you know, there's, a, you have the romantic idea of when you're gonna actually be drinking it. And I think you're looking at the labels and sort of saying, what, what vibe am I looking for tonight? Um, so I could see how you could bring that to the online space. That's my experience, at least, uh, when I romanticize the wine I'm buying. Yeah, no, like, I think you might be like our, our target consumer for a lot of things <laughs> of, of the wine consumer, because it's totally true, but like, it's that emotional attachment to that experience, right? Like it's a fun thing that people enjoy doing it. So that, that experience that they associate with wine is always very rooted in their DNA. Well, I can send you my shipping address after this. Um, <laughs> if there's anything you need to test. Uh, we could open this up to questions. I mean, I have a few more things I could ask Patrick, but if there's questions from the audience, would love to hear them either for, I would imagine for Patrick more than myself. While we were waiting, there's, there's one more that I had for you, Patrick. Um, this is a crazy thought experiment, but five years from now, what does your job look like? Oh, assuming that, you know, you're still with this company. Yeah, that's a great question. I should prep this for like my review. Um, <laughs> I think five years from now, I think like 
the idea is insights. Like, again, it's that more facilitating insights. Like, I definitely love this world and want to stay in that. But it's it's going to be less of insights owned by a individual isolated team. It's just going to be more of this like universal skill that all um, departments within an organization kind of utilize. So like there'll still be that team that manages the relationship and owns the data sources and kind of pushing it out there. But it's really going to be more about like facilitating the others, others to go do as opposed to doing it for them. Yeah, I, that's one thing that we're really learning on the fly and clearly all organizations are is, you know, most companies still have a sort of centralized insights function, but the users are everybody from the marketers to the scientists to um, the, the researchers themselves. So, okay, so you're saying there still are going to be jobs for, for insights folks out there, but everybody's also going to need to have sort of a baseline level of, of insights that they conduct. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean that's that's my goal for like for our organization and the team. Uh, still have a job. Still have a job in five years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got to start. Hear you, man. Me too. Me too. Um, okay. Any questions? Lisa, Amy, Sophia, Jacqueline. I can see all your names. While we're waiting, Patrick, maybe give us um, one more like nugget of information that, or or. or an, nugget of insight that you got from wine drinkers in the last six, 12 months. Yeah, I think there's this growing trend of premiumization, which I always struggle saying that word. Um, but it's kind of like people are exploring it. Like they're all, they're trading up and looking for a new and, you know, higher quality, meaning higher priced items. It's not just about like getting in the door with that jug of wine, which is, you know, it's great for a, a time and in place, but people are really looking for um, better product experiences, um, each time they come to the category. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I love a good cork bottle, but I guess there's really no reason why I couldn't have a six pack of wine that I can carry with me to, to uh, Prospect Park and just come in all different formats. So I, I suppose that's, that's coming then, huh? Yeah, I think that's something to watch out for is like, can of wine, right? People associate a can of wine to like a beer, but the ABV, like a, a soda sized can of wine, is like a half bottle of wine. So like people are like finding out like, oh, that's a lot of wine for like what I expected it to be compared to like one beer. So just a PSA for everyone out there. Okay. So I, I shouldn't just crush a whole six pack of wine by myself. Got it. Um, any final thoughts, Patrick, on how the folks in here can help their organizations become more agile in the research they do? No, I mean, I think it's just like, try new things, right? Like there's nothing that's too crazy not to try it. It may not work and you may not find out that the, uh, the output is like, was worth the, the investment. But I think what you will learn is like, what doesn't work, it's going to help you refine and be more targeted for the future of what is going to work. So do all your crazy ideas, go test, test as much as you can and learn. I love that. I think that's one of the coolest things about Susie is like, you can test all your crazy ideas now. There's no risk, right? Otherwise, you can't just put that stuff out there and see what happens, but you can test it on Susie. So if you have crazy ideas and you're worried about just shipping them out to the world, then bring on in a uh, Agile Insights platform and you'll get to test them out first. I think that's a good thought to end on. Well, thanks so much, Patrick. It was great catching up with you and I'm uh, looking forward to more great work together. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.